This is Dave Sundstrom. Welcome to another video celebrating entertainment from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. I know, I know what you are thinking. Farrah didn't have a red bikini poster. It was a red one-piece swimsuit that she was wearing in her best-selling poster. And you know what, you're right. But in a way, you're also kind of wrong. Give me just a few minutes and I will fill you in on all of the details. I distinctly remember this TV guide sitting on a side table by our family room sofa. Along with Kate and Jacqueline, there was Farrah on the cover as Jill Monroe. She, along with her two lovely co-stars, helped make the Aaron Spelling produced crime drama one of ABC's biggest hits. How did I know it was a bona fide smash? Well, all I really needed to do was look at these magazines. Before the internet, Facebook, and Twitter, we had dynamite and bananas to let us know what was trending. And there she was, poofy hair and all, Farrah Fawcett Majors. Along with the TV show, over the course of just a few short months, she had become a genuine media sensation. And while part of the reason was definitely the TV show, there was way more to it than just that. Here's where I get to talk about THE poster. I've read some articles where it has been said that the producers of Charlie's Angels asked each of the actresses to pose for a poster, but only Farrah agreed to do one. And like I said earlier, she also agreed that she would wear a bikini in that poster. From what I understand, Pro Arts, the company making the poster, staged a couple of different photo shoots with different photographers each time. But in both cases, Farah had not been happy with any of the photos. Ultimately, she asked if the company would bring photographer Bruce McBroom on board. He had taken photos of her before and she had really liked his work. When Bruce got up to Fair and Lee's place to take the pictures, Farah greeted him in a one-piece red swimsuit and told him that she didn't like how she looked in any of the bikinis that she had on hand. Farah asked him what he thought and Bruce told her that she looked great. Farrah also told him that she hoped that they could get done with the whole thing rather quickly since she had friends waiting to go play tennis with her. So they looked around the house for suitable places to take photos and then Bruce remembered that he had a blanket in his vehicle that he thought might work perfectly as a backdrop. Once the blanket was securely draped against a wall the two of them went to work and during just the next 10 to 15 minutes, approximately 50 photos were taken. Afterward, Farah identified the photo that she liked best. Her reasoning was that she liked her smile, and the hair that she had just curled herself just moments before the photo session looked absolutely fantastic. There were, of course, other things about the picture that Farah and Bruce thought might be appealing, but the thing that she liked the absolute most about this particular image was that Farah thought it did a good job of conveying her complete self, her beauty inside and out. As we all know now, this poster went on to be the biggest all-time selling poster ever. Costing two to three bucks a pop depending on where you found it, Pro Arts Incorporated was selling around 800,000 posters a month. And Farah, all of a sudden, well, she wasn't just a TV star anymore. Nope she had become a poster queen. Joining the likes of Raquel Welch and Marilyn Monroe who had come before her, there was just something about that poster. It truly was a perfect storm of things going right. The smile, the hair, and that red one-piece swimsuit. However, there was a pretty big secret that Farah had kept from Bruce McBroom on the day of that photo shoot. You see, Farah had no intention from the get-go of being photographed in a bikini. And that was because of a childhood scar on her stomach that she felt might be visible to all. Little did she know at the time that her choice to wear a one-piece swimsuit was the exact right decision. It truly was the icing on the cake. After that first season of Charlie's Angels, Farah chose to leave the show so that she could focus on movies. I've published another video about that. Hang tight though. When I'm done with this video, I'll share a link to that one in case you're interested in watching it. But I've got so much more to share here. A fun bit of trivia about Farah is that she was actually in line for the role of Gloria in Foul Play. Farah told the Associated Press in 1979 that the decision was made to go with Goldie Hawn 
When Spelling Goldberg Productions, the producers of Charlie's Angels, warned all of the movie studios that they would be sued for damages if they employed Farrah Fawcett Majors. Not to be denied, however, Farrah can still be seen in the background during the party scene where Goldie's character is first introduced in the movie. Sadly, Farrah left us far too early. On July 25, 2009, she passed away after valiantly battling cancer for three years. She was just 62 years old at the time of her death. On the same day as Farrah's death, Michael Jackson would also leave this world. For whatever reason, it seemed to me like his passing somehow overshadowed Farrah's. That said, I totally agree with the headline on this cover of In Touch Weekly. They were both gone way too soon. In 2011, Farrah's red swimsuit, along with a copy of that world-famous poster, would be donated and forever enshrined in the Smithsonian National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. A couple of other quick updates worth sharing are Bruce McBroom went on to have one of the most amazing careers as a still photographer in Hollywood. Over his career, he worked on more than 60 movies, including E.T., City Slickers, Sleepless in Seattle, and 48 Hours. And while he may have only been paid $1,000 for that famous photo shoot with Farrah, the notoriety that he got from being the guy who took that photo was truly worth millions. Unfortunately, I can't say that Pro Arts, the company that produced the poster, had the same kind of success as Bruce. They filed for bankruptcy in 1981 after a long and protracted legal battle with another company over the rights to produce an Elvis poster after his passing in 77. In the end, Pro Arts won their court case, but by then it was just too late for them to recover financially. Perhaps they just should have stuck with producing more posters of Farrah. So what are your thoughts? Why do you think that poster was so darn popular? Do you think the poster would have been just as popular if Farrah had worn a bikini like she'd originally agreed to? Let me know in the comments section and while you're at it, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like. Maybe even subscribe to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.